Thank you. Hey, it is a privilege to be with you. I'm glad you're in church. The Lord blesses and honors those that are faithful, especially as we meet together. Again, uh, Pastor has introduced us already, but John and Stephanie uh, Rediger. And I'm just a country boy and they got moved back to the big city. How many of y'all, I'll tell you what, uh, I enjoy uh, driving down to Patuxent. It's time with you. We're going to be in 2 Timothy chapter number 2. I'll be sharing the messages, but as you prepare and get your Bible open, 2 Timothy chapter number 2, we'll be reading actually several verses, laying the foundation. But I want to mention this. I'm very thankful uh, to uh, be able to present the uh, PowerPoint presentation. I think often we can take the audio video guys for granted and when they get the attention is usually when things possibly don't work right and often to no fault of their own. And Brother Isaac and Brother Hyatt back there, I want to say thank you to those guys and I want to give them personally a big hand. And I mean that. And I mean that. And I, they could turn the mic off really fast, right? So, or this one or one of them. So I've got to be in good graces there. Uh, th thank you for investing with us through the college and the blessing and going back years. All right, we're going to jump, jump right in. I want to share, uh, I'll just say this before I even begin to preach. Uh, I thank God for uh, everyone that chooses to serve Christ and commits a life to him. I'm thankful for that. But I'm especially thankful for the 20-year-olds and the 30-somethings in the culture that they are being raised in that are choosing to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'll tell you what, what you have here is very, very special. Amen. And please do not take that for granted. Thank God for what he's doing at Patuxent Baptist Church. And I see coming in, I get a, I get a, you know, a little, little, little window frame of it. But I'll tell you, the Lord's blessing is on Patuxent Baptist Church. And we ought to thank him for that and never get used to it, all right? 2 Timothy chapter 2, I'm actually going to read 19 verses. Now, if you're able to and appropriate uh, physically, if you're able to, I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to read through these 19 verses. I won't preach the entire portion, but there's some things shared there. You need to see the context. Of course, the Apostle Paul, 2 Timothy, uh, writing to Timothy in his latter years and passing on some, some great wisdom, but obviously it's God's Word inspired for us today as well. 2 Timothy 2 and chapter 2, verse number 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for mastery, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husband, men that laboreth, must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things, remember that the Lord Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom Hymenaeus and Philetus, and excuse me, who concerning the, the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrowing the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, Amen. having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Lord, I thank you for your powerful word. It's eternal. It's life-changing. 
And Lord, today uh, we have an opportunity to receive it. I pray that you will minister to hearts in a way that only you can, in a way uh, that um, we respond in a way that's pleasing to you. I'm not sure what you have in store for the church body. I know the message you've given to me, but I pray that every one of us would tonight respond in obedience to your spirit working in our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. How many of you would agree that we live in some shaky times today? Shaky times. It, it brought to mind a portion in Hebrews about future events. Hebrews 12, 27, the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. It's a purging time right now. It's a, it's a proving time. It's a testing time. Now, I wanted to draw your attention to one word. It's repeated and shared through First and Second Timothy, or a form of the word, and it's found in Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 8, and the first word. I'm going to read that word out loud to you. The word is remember. Would you say that word with me? Let's say it. Remember. Remember means to exercise your memory, to recollect, to rehearse, to make mention, to be mindful, and remember. Does anyone struggle that, with that area of needing to remember? No. You can't remember, right? Okay. Remember, as Paul was challenging Timothy about things that he needed to be prepared for, and even if he dealt with his own sufferings, he calls him to remember some things. In the midst of the challenges and the shaky times in which we live, we ought to remember. He thought it was important to remember. He shares that word in verse 8. In verse 14, he says, look at it. Of these things, put them in, what's the word, everyone? Remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit for the subverting of the hearers. If you go back to chapter number 1, Chapter number one, I'm going to lay the foundation here. Verse number one, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, who is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have, what's that word, everyone? Remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to, what is the word, friends? Remember, remembrance of the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded in thee also. Wherefore, verse number six, I put thee in, what is the word, everyone? Remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Now, would you read that last verse with me out loud? For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. It was important to Paul that, that to share that he remembered the faith of, of uh, Timothy's uh, family and his own faith. The remember that he was praying for him. It was important that he remember. And we understand that that is extremely important that we remember. I want to share something that may sound like it doesn't make any sense to you, but it ties in exactly with the message, okay? <clears throat> Around our house, we'll be ready to go somewhere on a trip or travel, and then I'll be thinking, I don't know if I have enough money to, to, to go there or do this or do that, and then, and then right out of nowhere, my wife runs to this secret stash, and he pulls out gift, she pulls out gift cards. You know what I'm talking about. And she pulls out the gift cards, and I'm like, She's like, I've got a Dairy Queen, I've got a Cracker Barrel, I've got a Lido's Pizza, I've got a, man, and she starts naming them off, like, like she's about to deal them out, and, and I'm like, where did you get that? She goes, don't you remember, uh, for our anniversary, your mom gave us this, don't you remember for your birthday, uh, you got this and you got that, and you know what I learned, one, don't ever believe that lady, your, your, the wife especially, the first time she tells you, I don't have any money. Because she, she, she has, a matter of fact, tonight, I said, well, I know we had a Cracker Barrel card, so let me pull that out. And then I didn't even know about the Dairy Queen card, and I found a Dairy Queen card, brother. I'm telling you what. So she's wondering where it is. It's right here, sweetheart. Okay. And so don't let me forget to take that with me, please. Okay, I'll be driving back to get it, asking someone to come back to open the church up. 
Uh, do you know, uh, I found an article uh, in January 3, 2020, cbsnews.com. They, they write there is, a, there is a consumer waste up to $3 billion in unspent gift cards. Now, it's a, it's a money, it's a win-win for retailers because you, you, you give them money and then they don't, you don't spend it. So that's like a 100% whatever profit over everything. And then, but they cite why so much waste. Some giftees forget about or replace, uh, misplace the card. Others do not shop at those outlets. Sometimes it's neglect, forgetfulness, or they just didn't want to shop there in the first place. I want to make this application here as we get into the message. We have been gifted by Almighty God in so many areas. We have the gift of salvation. Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift of God which is in thee. Uh, and he told him to remember. Uh, you know, I didn't have any interest in the gift cards because I didn't even realize that I had them. I had forgotten that I have them. I had accepted them, but I forgot they were there. And I, I don't, I'm not making light or belittling or making God's gifts to us cheap, but I can tell you there is a great gift of salvation that was paid for all of us on Calvary. But unless someone understands it, receives it, and, and, and takes advantage of that, that, that if I can say that gift goes un, un, unspent on, for that person and, and for, for you and I God has gifted you for his calling and purpose in your life he has and yet in the midst of it there's shaky times there's challenges and we are called to remember and so I want to ask you to consider a few things tonight as we remember go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 now and verse number 1 we're told to be strong Verse number two, there's an emphasis for faithful men. And 2 Timothy 2 and verse number three, to endure hardness. You know, the Christian life is simple, but it's not easy. And we need to realize that. And, and then he uh, gives a challenge about being not entangled, that we may please him. If you get caught up in things, you won't be able to please Christ. And then he talks about striving lawfully. Verse seven, notice this. Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. As if he's sharing, consider this and, and you're going to get a, a greater grasp of, of, of everything else, Timothy. And then he says this in verse number eight. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Now, the gospel. Now, it wasn't necessarily like Paul's gospel as if he thought it up as if it was him, uh, but he took personal ownership of what the gospel is. And the point is, I mean, I'll just ask the question, what is the gospel? I may have shared this here. I asked the question in a, to a group of high school students that have gone through Christian education, and a, a, a maybe 20, 20-some 20 students, and I said, what is the gospel? And I'm sure maybe some knew the answer. They maybe didn't want to, you know, call it out. But I didn't get one clear answer. And if we don't understand what the gospel is, uh, is how is it going to be received and how is it going to be shared? Now, I know I'm talking to a grounded crowd overall, right? Yes, I believe that. But I want to remind us what the gospel is. And I'm going to take a pause. It's going to take a few more minutes in the message. But I believe it's important that we, we understand what the gospel message is. Someone would say the gospel is good news. And it is good news. Yes? And it means good message. But I have some good news, some good news. But what is the good news? That's the good question, right? First right. Corinthians chapter 15, if you could turn over there, even though you could say, Brother Rediger, I have that memorized. I know it. But it does something to see God's word on the printed page. It does something. The spirit of God that gave us the word of God does a work in your heart. As you, as you open it up. 1 Corinthians 15, and I'll just read really verses 3 and 4. There's so much shared here, but the Apostle Paul shares, verse number 3, 1 Corinthians 15. For I delivered, well, you know what, I better read verse number 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the, what? Which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received. Here it is, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Friends, the gospel is that Christ died for our sins, and that he was buried, and that he rose again. 
Hallelujah. Uh, we might say Jesus died on the cross, he was buried, and he rose again. And that is a description that is true, but it is not a complete description. Christ died for our sins, and he was buried, and he rose again. And may we never get over it. Number one, we ought to remember that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ makes the difference. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ makes the difference. As Paul was sharing this in 2 Timothy, if you'll return back over there in verse number 8, he says, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. He goes on to write, Therefore I endure all things. Uh, then he says in verse 11, Is a faithful saying, For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Himself. This is probably simple to say this, but we serve a risen Savior. And we ought not get used to it, and we ought never get over it. Uh, there's something shared. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. If I, I'll just I'll wait on that. But Jesus rose from the dead. And let me tell you, one of the hardest things that someone will deal with is a loss. When someone is, is brought out into eternity, whether, it's, uh, whether they're prepared for it or not. But I am so thankful today for the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Death is not the end, because in Christ there is eternal life. And I know this is nothing new to you, but by the grace of God, may we never, may we never get over that. It is incomparable. Uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ makes a difference. There's nothing that can be compared to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to notice something, uh, something here. When we read through 2 Timothy chapter 2, he says this in verse 16, but, profane, but shun profane and vain babblings. When I, when I read those words, I think of, the Charlie Brown and the adult talking in the classroom, and you've heard it, wah, wah, right? That empty, uh, empty talk, profane would be, actually means a, a, a threshold uh, to wickedness. And then vain babblings is empty sounding that's fruitless. Let me tell you, anything stacked up contrary to the gospel is, 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 is vain babblings. It's empty. Uh, the culture today and the challenge, and even in our education system, uh, there's uh, falsehood being purported as truth, and, and yet... It is, it is vain babblings. Let me, let me share this. And we share this in one of our personal evangelism classes. Let, let me just share, give a contrast. Because it is in contrast to the gospel that there's no comparison to, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Modernism was before, uh, in, the, in the 19th century, it says, a, towards, toward, a movement towards the belief with, uh, in modern ideas. That sounds good. You've heard the phrase postmodernism, yes? Now listen. Uh, Postmodernism is a skepticism towards what is accepted as true. Let me read some statements and make it, I'm just making a point here. There, there are views that people hold to, but they don't hold up under, under scrutiny. And I think the, the young people today, unless they're grounded in God's word, they can, they can be influenced and their lives be impacted by this, uh, by false, really a false narrative of why we're here I believe with all of my heart, the Bible, God's word is, is the only, but it's also the best explanation for where we came from, why we're here, and where we're going. Amen. With all of my heart, I believe that. Let me give a contrast to that. Do you ever hear the phrase, there is no truth? Have you ever heard that phrase, statement, or sentence, whatever you want to say? Have you, how many of you heard that said? There is no truth. Let me ask a question. Is that a true statement? Vain babbling. You can't know anything for sure. You ever have, have heard someone say that? Are you sure about that? There's just a couple more I could share about, about well, well I'll, I'll stop on that. Someone may question the existence of God. If there is God, why is there evil? And the question, and I didn't think this up through reading and study, but the fact that someone's asking the question about evil means there, there's an acknowledgement, there's good, and there's evil. And you wouldn't, if there was no God, you wouldn't even be having the discussion. Say, what are you talking about? What I'm saying is what's out there is vain babblings. And I'm telling you, you better stick with God's word. Hey, this world is moving fast and changing fast. And things we're seeing in the last even few months is, is things we would say, well, maybe in another generation. Wow. And so, an amazing. One thing I do know for sure, the return of Christ is closer than it's ever been. Yes, sir. We don't know when, but we know it's closer than it's ever been. 
2 Timothy 2, verse 17. Look at this, because I'm leading up to this. And their word, that's Hymenaeus and Philetus, and their word does eat as, uh, uh, doth a, a canker, is Hymenaeus and Philetus, 2 Timothy 2, 18, uh, who concerning the truth have erred, saying the resurrection is past already and overthrown the faith of some. Now, fact, the resurrection had already occurred when these words were penned. And so in that respect, you might say, well, it's already happened. But let me tell you something. The resurrection isn't past already. Let me tell you what we're, what we're dealing with here. What we're dealing with is they were, they were evaluating the impact, I believe personally from my study, the impact of Christianity on the culture, and it, it's already run its course. Can I say the gospel of Jesus Christ is not done on this earth? Hey, and, and if you get to a place that you're past, you're past, Here's the thing I remember as we were pastoring on the Eastern Shore. Someone gets saved, and they're excited. Man, I read this in the Bible, and that's for me. Wow. You're praying to, to the Lord God that they don't get around this certain Christian. Because they get, to, oh, man, I remember being like that, too, when I first got saved. But don't worry. In a few years, you'll get over it. Wow. I hope I never get over it. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I feel like a little kid still to this day. I don't look like a little kid. But I feel like a little kid in the excitement and the joy and the privilege to do ministry. And, uh, and I can, we can take this stuff for granted. We can get used to it. But never, never, uh, never get to the place, oh, I, I've, already, you know, I've already been through that. Uh, you know, uh, and you might even look back at our uh, generations back in the 70s and the 80s and the church is being built and great things happening in the heydays or whatever you want to say and, and there's someone well that's all past already I'll tell you what these are days to live for the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. it's a purging it's a, it's a it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a separating time but I, I think I don't I don't want to do anything I want to meet with God's people I want to hear God's word I want to share him I want people to know him and uh, yeah there's challenges I mean uh, churches California or whatever don't sing you know we could go on man live right it's a great day to serve the Lord Amen. hey realize remember in midst of the shaky time that that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ makes a difference let me share this it's it's not cliche it's not to be cute or cheesy You've heard the incredible illustration, the little boy walking along the shoreline, and he's all those thousands of starfish that got washed up there, and he's going to rescue him, and some geezer comes by, well, you're never going to save, you know. You, you, right? You heard that, right? You're never going to save all of them. You're not going to make a difference. And he reaches down and picks up one. He said, I made a difference for that one. You've heard that, right? Amen. Well, if you didn't, you just did right now. <laughs> I want to remind you about the gospel of Jesus Christ makes a difference because I was one of those starfish, and he reached down and picked me up. And the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ makes a difference. How do you know? It made a difference in my life. And I hope it's made a difference in your life. And I'll tell you what. And it can still continue to make a difference in the lives of others. And I'll tell you. And what about all the wickedness? What about, hey, most people don't believe the gospel. Let me tell you, the fact that many do not believe the gospel doesn't, doesn't make a case for it not being true. It authenticates what it actually says. The, the, road, the narrow is the way. And I'll tell you what. Uh, I thank God that I've been exposed to his word, and I'm, I'm accountable and responsible for that. But God's word is true. He said, let, let his, the word be true and every man a liar. Thank God that we have the truth today. Amen. The resurrection, uh, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ makes a difference. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Let me give you a second one. The word of God is not bound. If you will go to 2 Timothy, please, back there, uh, chapter 2 and verse 8, first verse number 9. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. If you're, if you're with me, can you read it? But the word of God is not bound. Amen. The word of God is not bound. It is unstoppable. The gospel is uncomparable, and the gospel makes a difference, but the word of God is not bound. Paul was bound. God's word was not bound. Now, I'm going to talk pretty open about this. It is no fun leading singing to a video camera when there's nobody in the congregation, Amen. let alone preaching to a video camera. You know, it, it's not, see, now you, I can't tell what kind of face you're making. 
You could be like, oh, man, just go, whatever. Or you could be, ah, you know, amen and on the inside. I don't know. But if you're preaching to a camera, Lord only knows they might be running and getting some popcorn and a soda while you're preaching. You don't know. And I tell you, preaching to empty pews is no fun. It's a great challenge. I, I tell you, thank God for the people here tonight. And we're, we're seeing now a lot of folks come back up there at Independent. What a great blessing seeing that. But you may, at times, we may feel bound. A little restricted on what we can do. And there are restrictions, yes? There's a lot of things we can't do. We need to remember that the Word of God is not bound. His Word is unstoppable. I want to ask you to look at Philippians chapter 1, and this is just a Bible example. The Apostle Paul knew what he was talking about, speaking obviously under the inspiration of the very Spirit of, Spirit of God, and also through his experience as well, he lived it. Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 12, God's Word says this, and I'm going to go ahead and read it while you're turning over there for time. He says, verse 12, Philippians 1, 12, but I would... Uh, but I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which are happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace. Now I can read the rest, but I'm going to stop there. Paul is in prison, he's bound, and he says, the, the things that have happened unto me have happened, uh, fallen out for the, rather to the furtherance of the gospel. What has happened to me in the restrictions placed in, on me in my life are adv actually advancing the gospel. Wow. If you go to Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 22, he, he concludes uh, his, his uh, letter to the Philippians, and he's writing, and he's concluding Philippians 4.22. He says, all the saints salute you, Philippians 4.22, chiefly the saints, chiefly they are of, that are of Caesar's household. It was the Apostle Paul's influence where he was led because he preached the gospel that he was bound, that he was, that was in a place to share the gospel, that the gospel got to high places that it wouldn't have gotten, would have not gotten to had he not been brought there by the circumstances in his life. You know, could it be, and we already know the answer to this, that all this COVID and all this is allowing for the furtherance of the gospel. Amen. And I heard it tonight in your own testimonies. I know many of you are familiar with, obviously, Brother Chris War. He shared in his, in his recent prayer letter about his dad being saved. Amen. If it wasn't for the COVID, they wouldn't have been on, this is his letter, uh, he wouldn't have been online, and his dad would have been uh, here in uh, the, the, the church, the, from his letter, the Catholic church. He wouldn't have been listening. His dad started listening to his messages, and he would call and talk about his messages, and his dad now will be in eternity. Wow! And he prayed for him for decades. I think 30-some years. And we have letters from missionaries. I won't, I won't, you know, you can look your own, all yours up. But I, I just, you know, the, the more people come into Christ. I, I saw some, you guys are doing some, have done and doing some creative things with the, with the online, the videos, the devotions. Um, I'll tell you, it's a blessing. And people are hearing the message that would not have heard the message before. Amen. And I'll tell you, even for us in Clinton, the, the uh, brother Dove, he uh, he does uh, some of the elderly, the young at heart. They don't they don't have like the, they're not techie. You know what I'm talking about? I'm like somewhere between techie and not techie. I'm like like depends on if you're if you're younger than me, you would say you're not techie. If you're old than me, like boy, you know what you're doing, right? So I'm somewhere in there, right? Okay, you got that. Okay, so I don't I know enough to be dangerous. I, I mess up, but I can whatever. Okay, so but he he's um, teaching, and they have a phone number that you call in. And then you can hear Brother Dove teach. And they're getting dozens of people online and on the phone that were not hearing the word of God. Amen. Even far away. The Spanish ministry had never done live stream at Independent Baptist Church. And they had to work to get that because they're running live stream for English, live stream for Spanish at the same time. You got to have, I'll just say it this way, I don't know much. You got to have a bunch of zoomies or something. I don't know. It, it, you got to have a lot of high speed stuff going on. They got that going and, and what's exciting, as Brother Fabo, the Spanish pastor, as he's preaching, they're not just hearing it in one, one country. They're not hearing the, the message in two countries. We learned it wasn't even three countries. It was more than three. It wasn't just four. It wasn't just five. It wasn't just six. I'm going to keep going. 
wasn't just seven countries, wasn't just eight, wasn't just nine countries, but they found out the gospel, the messages were going out to ten different countries around the world that were not hearing the message before. God only knows the impact, but friends, we need to stay faithful and keep pressing forward. You see, remember that the word of God is not bound. We might be bound. I was thinking about the Apostle Paul in prison. And if that happened to me, buddy, you, you can bet your bottom dollar. I'd have some highs and lows, but they'd be starting to go fund me page to bail me out of jail. I'm going to tell you right now. I tell you, and it's no joke now as we talk about it. And many of you know that. But I don't know if I could have had his attitude. But I thank God today for his wonderful attitude. Do you know, uh, it's just the way for God's people. Do you know in the past in Exodus, the Bible says the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. God's people. Wow. In Acts 8, 4, it says, Therefore they that were scattered abroad, this is from the persecution, went everywhere preaching the word. Wow. And, and even in Revelation, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people in Revelation 5 singing the praises of God as a result of hearing the message. Wow. Remember, the word of God is not bound. It's unstoppable. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ makes a difference. It is uncomparable. Nothing compares to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But let me give you the final one. And I know the word finally is, is every Baptist church member's favorite word because they're hopeful, but they know it's not really true. But I'm going to say it anyways. And finally... 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. Would you look at these words with me, please? Nevertheless, considering all that he shared up to this, the foundation of God standeth sure. I'm going to read the rest, but I want to say this. Remember the foundation of God standeth sure. That foundation, friends, is unshakable. In the shaky times we live, the foundation of God standeth sure. We have an anchor that keeps us soul, soul steadfast and sure. You know the words. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. I got to looking at that foundation. Standeth sure means to abide, it continues, it's stable, and we understand that. I just can't help but think of Matthew 16, 18. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Acts chapter 4, verse number 10. Be it known unto you all, to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Talking about a foundation. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. My foundation is the Lord Jesus Christ and his holy word. Now let me, let me share this in application. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. It is not time to play around with God. It's time to be separated unto him. Just, just recently, and I won't share about my health problems because you don't, you don't really know about my problem, but I want to share enough. I had a heart procedure, and they found out I had an event, and I can tell you what that event was later, but that event that happened has changed my life. I thought I was eating good, but I was eating good. And you know, you know true repentance is when you start giving up stuff. I gave up eating Doritos. Let me tell you, that's huge. I could work down a whole bag of Doritos in one sitting, and my wife knows it. I gave up that salt, and if you're with me, it's boring. I'm eating chicken and veggies and chicken and veggies, and then once in a while I sneak in. Once a week I can get something, and, and my doctor said, No bacon! No bacon! Lord, <laughs> no bacon! <laughs> I found out. He was deal talking about pork bacon. I found there is a turkey bacon. But anyways, no red meat. It's not red when I cook it. So I'm just, I'm just looking at all this. And I thought, you know, and it's no joke. And I thank God that I'm able to be here today. And that could change in a, literally in a heartbeat. And I understand that now more than ever. And, and, and I, I, I'm thankful for every day that God gives me. And, he, and I pray he gives me the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds more. 
But if I can, if I can withdraw from a few indulgences of Doritos and and, and the and the you know the big you know 24 ounce porterhouse for me, I'm talking me, not you. Okay, you do your thing. That's between you. But if I can, if I can, if I can refrain from a little bit of that for a little more better quality and quantity of life physically, surely I should be willing to let go of some things so that I can have a greater impact spiritually. Amen. Friends, it's shaky times. But I'm going to tell you, the gospel of Jesus Christ, of the Lord Jesus Christ, makes a difference. The word of God is not bound. And thanks be to God, the foundation of God standeth sure. Jesus said his word, he says, tells us, yesterday, today, and forever. He says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hallelujah. We have a strong foundation. Let's keep moving forward for him. Hey, if you don't know Christ, that gospel is for you. And if you receive Christ, that gospel is to be lived out in the lives of those around us and to be shared. And we are to be committed followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me as Pastor comes? Remember the gift cards. The gift cards, you can have them. But if you don't remember you got them, you're not benefiting from what God has given you, and his gifts are wonderful. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your love for us and your word and your great power. Uh, Lord, that you know the end from the beginning. You knew we would be in, in the circumstances we're in in our nation and even in our, our uh, state right here and even those we love around the world uh, with the health crisis, and yet what no greater time for us to live for you than today. And I pray this evening as we, as we have the final moments of the service that everyone, as we go from here, will be reconciled with you, that there'll be no unconfessed sin, that every soul present will, one, know that they are saved and know that they are in a, in a proper, uh, right fellowship with you as well. We pray these things, that you would have your will and way and hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand to your feet? And I know the invitation, I'm not sure how you do your invitation with the, the COVID and all that, but I'm going to tell you, the piano player, if you would just begin to play, whatever the Lord's directed you to do, the best thing you can do is to be obedient, to reconcile with him. The altar's open, pray at your pew, wherever you're comfortable. Do you know Christ today? Are you living for him today? you're asked this often but would you bow your heads and I again I you, you this may be the ma- last message you hear I don't know I, I can't say I don't know I know God's given us today he's given us this evening he's given us now how many could say beyond a shadow of a doubt hey brother Rediger I know I know I know I know that Christ is my savior I've been born again I know that I'm saved because I've trusted Christ as my savior would you lift your hands a testimony now, those of you that with your hands raised, you could put them down now, but would you pause? You're called upon to remember that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ makes a difference. Uh, however often you do it, you observe the Lord's table in remembrance, you see. And tonight, would you just thank him that he died on the cross for your sins, he was buried, and that he's alive, that he rose again. Would you thank him? Maybe you need to renew a commitment. Tonight, you raised your hand that you were saved. Maybe tonight you couldn't raise your hand. I'll just go ahead and ask. I know we got the Sunday night crowd here. You say, preacher, I, I can't say that I know that heaven's my home. I can't say tonight that I know that I'm saved. There's an uncertainty. I have a doubt. Or maybe you know that you're not in Christ. And you and the Lord touched your heart tonight. You say, preacher, pray for me. I need, I need to be saved. I need to receive the gospel, that gift. God's gift of eternal life. Would you pray for me? Would you lift your hand? Now, I want to ask this, and it's not a corner you or, or, or trick you or anything, but maybe your heart's desire is, preacher, I'm saved, and as a result of the challenge tonight or just God working in my heart in recent recent days or uh, say, you know, I, I, I realize that 
I, I need to live, continue to live for Christ and by his grace. I want to stay faithful until he calls me home. I'm thankful tonight that his word is, is not bound, that his foundation is sure and his gospel makes a difference in my life. And by his grace, I want to, I want to follow him. And, and tonight, uh, the Lord spoke to my heart and I just want to move forward, lifting your hand. Maybe I don't know what God's done in your heart. Hey, God bless you all. And may you continue to move forward for him. May you just be obedient. Pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ridiger, for sharing your heart and the Word of God. Um, you know, uh, we were talking about this this morning in a message and in a meeting a little bit earlier, but um, could it be that revival's right around the corner? And uh, I just think we as God's people need to just be ready and get ready. Um, I'm always, the older I get, the more I'm, more I'm looking toward and expecting God to do something. And, um, and I, don't think, I don't think this is the end, this is the beginning. Uh, I believe I believe with all my heart and have believed that uh, these are greatest days to be saved and to live for God and um, I, it's excited I'm excited um, you know nothing's ever uh, routine anymore amen you know we're just uh, I'm just looking to see the Lord and when when it looks like maybe a door shut God can open something and we don't want to miss it we don't want to miss it so Hey, listen, so pray about Bible college. Maybe God would have you do that. Uh, I've had some people ask me this uh, past few weeks about it. Uh, maybe if you're married and you uh, would like to take a class or two, uh, you can make it a date night. The marriage and family class would be a perfect, perfect. You know, you, you practice on the way up to class. Take your wife out to dinner, you know. Ice cream, use up some gift cards. I'll tell you what, if you take a class as a couple, we'll get you some gift cards to take. We'll just do that. Okay? If you do that, I promise I'll we'll give you some we'll give you some gift cards to, to spend on the way up. Okay? Deal? But it's gotta be a couple. Gotta be a couple. And you can't get new couples, okay? So, you know, <laughs> couples that already are. All right. Amen. Brother Rediger, won't you and uh, Mrs. Rediger slip back to the table and... Uh